everyone, it's Alyssa and welcome to You Can Learn Math. Today we're talking about solving for a variable. Notice I'm not saying solving for x, that is a different connotation. That usually means we're doing something like 3x equals 15, what is x? What is the value of x? Whenever you hear solve for x, that's, that's generally what we're talking about. There are exceptions, of course, but general rule, we're talking about finding the value of something. If it's a solving for a more generic variable, when you get to this part of your math book where it says solve for a variable, totally different thing. And we kind of have to push that we're trying to figure out that x equals a number. What is that number? That's not what we're going to be doing here. And it can be hard to get out of that mindset. With these problems, you're going to see a ton of variables and they differ wildly and they don't really mean anything. For example, it might be X equals W, Y, Z, and you're told to solve for Y. And you go, uh, but there's no numbers. How can I tell you what Y is? And this is where we have to get out of that mindset. We are not figuring out the value of y as in a specific number. When you see this solve for a variable, what I want you to think is, I want that variable to be all by its little lonesome and everything else to be on the other side. So your answer is going to be y equals blah, 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 something. We don't know what yet, but when it says solve for y, your answer better have that variable, in this case y, by itself equals, and everything else in the problem needs to be over here on the other side. And these come in a variety. They get more complicated as they go. So let's start with a, a more basic or introductory one. And let's say that it is y equals six times s, and they say to solve for s. So what we're going to think about is we're going to look at which side S is. It's over here on the right. And I want to get rid of everything that isn't S. Everything that isn't S needs to go over here. And I need to figure out how to do that. So for this, I find it's most useful to think of undoing what's been done to S. And we want to undo it. We want to go backwards, like rrr, 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 in reverse order. So in this case, I'm not really concerned with what's on the left just yet. I'm just looking at the side with S. What's been done to S? This means six times S. S has been multiplied by six. That's it. Nothing else has happened. I want to undo that. So what's the opposite of multiplying by six? Dividing by six. So I'm going to divide both sides by six. So on the right hand side, since I've multiplied by six and then divided by six, that's undone it. So S is by itself. And on the left hand side, I have Y divided by six. And that's it. I've solved for S. S is by itself over here. Everything else is over on the left. And that's, that's the goal. That's what we're wanting. So each one of these, we're going to be just undoing what's been done. And they're going to start out with more straightforward or one step versions of this. For example, they might say Z plus four equals T solve for Z. Again, I don't really look at what's on the right hand side just yet. That doesn't matter for my plan of what I'm going to do. I look at the side with Z and I go, what happened to Z? Four was added to it. So I need to, to undo that. What is the opposite of adding four? It's subtracting four. Now in algebra, just as a reminder, every time there's an equal sign, an equation, it's like a, like a seesaw. And you've got two perfectly balanced people sitting on this seesaw. And if I want that seesaw to stay, perfectly balanced, whatever I do to the left side, I have to do to the right. 
So that's why here I subtract four from the left, I have to subtract four from the right so it still stays equal and balanced. Now that I've added four and subtracted four, that undoes what's been done to z. So now z is by itself, and on the right I have t minus four, and I have solved for z. Now as you might guess, it doesn't stay this straightforward and one step for very long. Pretty quickly they're going to add some extra wrinkles to it. And they're going to add more variables. So let's go one step further. Let's say it is b equals, say, c divided by a. And they want to solve for c. Okay, to solve for c, I go, all right. I don't have numbers like the 6 and the 4. We were dividing, multiplying, adding, subtracting previously. It's just all variables. The same rules apply. I want to solve for c. So what's been done to c? c has been divided by a. What's the opposite of dividing by something? Multiplying by something. So I'm going to multiply both sides by a. c being divided by a and then multiplied by a, that undoes that division to multiply by a. So on the right, I just have c, and on the left, I have a times b, and I've solved for c. Well, let's add a little wrinkle to this. Let's say we started at the same point, but instead of solving for C, they said, no, solve for A. Ooh, well, how do I do that? Because A hasn't had anything done to it. C has. C was divided by A. So it's not A being divided by C, so I can't undo that. What do I do? This, we have to get it. We have to work with it a little bit to try to uh, get A in a position where it can be by itself, where something's being done to A that can be undone. So this sort of scenario, this is a very common one you're going to see. The first thing you want to do is we want to get A over to the side, basically do what we just did, but that's just the first step. So, okay, so I'm going to, like we did before, I'm going to multiply both sides by A, and that gives me A times B equals C, like we just saw in the previous example. So A times B equals C. Well, now, now we're in a position where something is being done to A. A is being multiplied by B. So now I can undo what's been done to A. So A is being multiplied by B. What's the opposite of being multiplied by B? Being divided by B. Now that undoes what's being done to A, and so A equals C divided by B, and that would be my final answer. They also like to do things where they combine multiplication, division, subtraction, addition. They love adding things in there. For example, it might be A times X plus D equals Y plus I don't know, M. Let's say they said, I want to solve for X. Okay, so now this point, this part doesn't matter. The Y plus M, it doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna look over here. What's been done to X? And we wanna go in order and then go back, 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 in reverse order. So X has been multiplied by A. That was the first thing that happened to X. The second thing was D was added to it. So this was the first, this is the second. We want to go backwards in reverse order. So we want to do the set, undo the second one first and then undo the first one. To add D, the opposite of that is to subtract D. So I'm going to subtract D from both sides. I'm going to zoom out a little bit and move up here. And so that gives me a times x on the left equals y plus m minus d on the right. Now this next step, be careful on this one. And also make sure you know how your teacher wants you to present the final answer. More on that in a second. The next thing we're going to look at is, okay, what's the other thing that happened to x? It was multiplied by a. We want to undo that, so we want to divide by a. Now here's the part to be a little careful. There's two different ways you can write this. 
They both mean the same thing. But if the directions or your teacher are saying, present it this way, please present it the way they want you to. We don't want you to lose points on a technicality here. So the two ways that this might be presented when you have a long string of things that's being divided by a single number, it may be written as y plus m minus d all over a, or you can put each one over a. It literally means the same thing. As a little side note, the reason it means the same thing, if you put some real numbers in there, it'll help you see it. Like, let's say I said two fifths plus three fifths minus one fifth. And you would say, okay, two fifths plus three fifths is five fifths minus one fifth is four fifths. Isn't that the same as saying two plus three minus one over five? Two plus three is five minus one is four over five. It's the same thing. It works the same. But just again, make sure that you are presenting the answer in the way your teacher wants. It is most likely that it's going to be that they want it to be, um, all over a, but just double check. So in this case, X would equal Y plus M minus D all over a. Now there's pretty much an infinite variety of problems that they can provide for you when they say solve for a variable, but no matter what they present to you, these same principles are going to apply. You're going to look at the variable they want you to solve for and then you're going to do everything that you can to get it by itself and everything else on the opposite side. And once you've done that, you're finished. You do not have to worry about finding the numerical value of Z in these cases. It is all about just getting that variable X equals whatever it is, W equals whatever it is, and that's it. I hope you enjoyed that today. Um, if it was helpful, useful in any way, please like, share, subscribe. You know the drill. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hope you have a great day. See you later. Bye.